Hey, can I ask you a question? What do you think happens to us after we die? <sighs> That's a complicated question. Yeah, what are your thoughts? I think we just go to heaven, you know? Just. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't say in Hev heaven in or hell, book, right? It says it. Yeah, of course, depending on the person. Yeah. Now, which one do you think you'll go to? You know, to go to hell, you must have done a lot of bad stuff in your life. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to heaven. All right. Now, I believe the Bible. Do you believe the Bible as well? I actually believe in the Quran. Okay, you believe in the Quran. Interesting. Interesting, yes. the Quran does say that the Bible's from God as well. So by believing the Quran, yeah, you do believe in the Bible then. Of course, basically, so yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting, I'll, let me show you a verse in the Bible. It says this, As for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Now in that list, it says murderers should be in hell, but it also says all liars will have their part in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. Now, have you ever told a lie before? I have. Yeah, yeah me no. too. Um, yes. Uh, right? We've, and it says it's sexually immoral. That can mean sex before marriage, but it can also mean even just lusting after women that you're not married to, thinking a sexual thought in your mind. Have you ever lusted after <laughs> someone? I don't think so, no. That means, what it means is like even looking at pornography ever. Have you ever done that? Then I'm... <laughs> right. <laughs> And swearing's not good as well, by the way. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, okay, that's fine. So, if God then is going to judge you based on all of your sins, would you be innocent or guilty of breaking his law? You know, you know, I think I know that at least in the Quran, for every good thing you do, God tries to make it much because i'm a new muslim we could say you know oh, so really? not really that informed okay. yeah i'm a revert but i know that anything good i do god puts that more like you know before before the bad stuff i do you know what i mean so he tries to prioritize everything good i do than everything bad i do so the the weight of my sins are not the same way of my you know I understand. I understand. I don't know if I explain myself. I do understand you. I do understand what you're saying. Now imagine that happened in a court of law. A judge says, instead of just looking at the criminal's crime, I'm going to weigh up how many good deeds the criminal's done in his life compared to crimes, and if it's more good deeds, I'll just let the criminal go free. Is that a good judge or a bad judge? That's a bad judge. You're right. And that's the same thing, that God's not going to be a bad judge. He's not going to weigh up your good versus your bad. He's just going to see, yeah. have you broken his law? And if so, he punishes you by sending you to hell. So we're all doomed, basically. So we're all going to hell. <laughs> we all deserve hell. But thankfully, God has provided a way in which yeah. his justice can be satisfied without us having to go to hell. But someone's got to get punished for the what's done what we've done wrong either us in hell or it can be someone else taking it for us because if someone did take a hundred percent of your punishment how much punishment is left for you zero right so then if you don't have to go to hell anymore where do you get to go to heaven right that's the way that you're going to get to heaven now that's what do you think that's that's crazy <laughs> right now it has to be a perfect person someone who's done nothing wrong their entire life now that's not muhammad muhammad the quran says that muhammad did have sins so he can't be muhammad yes but the quran and the bible both say that jesus was without sin and yes. so jesus was the one who came down and volunteered to take our punishment in our place when he died on the cross Okay, yeah. so if he does that for you, takes all the hell you should get, where do you get to end up when you die? Heaven. heaven. So why do you get to go to heaven? Because 
Jesus took all my sins. Good answer. That's the reason. Is that good news? You know, this, this new stuff I learned, I really appreciate this. <laughs> In fact, if you don't mind, I'm going to take a picture of yeah, do that. this. Yeah. Sounds good. I'll not get you in it. That's fine. Thank you, actually. <laughs> Keep learning. Good. Now, we have to accept this gift from Jesus, though. It's not automatic. We actually have to accept it. And the way that we accept it is by trusting in our mind that the reason we're going to heaven is not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus did in taking the punishment for us. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what if today you do trust that Jesus did that for you, but then tomorrow you do five more sins and then you died? Would you go to heaven or hell? If we're thinking logically, then hell. Okay. But what was getting us into heaven again? Jesus taking all our sins. And that's all of our sins, including the sins you might do tomorrow. Aha. Okay. So where do you end up? Heaven. Good answer. Good answer. That doesn't mean you want to keep on doing more sins, but it just of means that because you, you have Jesus, he saves you even when you do fail in the future. But what if you don't trust that he took that punishment for you? Then where would you end up? Hell. Yeah, and since you don't want to go to hell, when should you start trusting that he took your punishment for you? Don't know. Okay, do you know when you're going to die? No, I don't. Could be any time. And you need to trust that he's done that for you before you die. So when should you start trusting he died for you, your sins? Wait, this is getting weird. I can't, I can't process what you're saying right now. Well, actually. it's like this. If I offer you a gift, right, you have to accept the gift to get the gift I'm offering you. So Jesus is offering yes. to pay for all of your sins so that you can go to heaven. You just got to accept it by trusting he's done that for you. But you yes. have to accept it before you die. Since you don't know when you're going to die, when should you trust that Jesus paid for your sins then? Like immediately? Um, Today? I guess so. Yeah, yeah. immediately, right? Because you may not have tomorrow. Exactly. Right. So then, if you're standing before God today and he asks you, why should I let you into heaven? What do you think you'd say to him? Because Jesus took all my sins. Great answer, man. You got it. You aced it. And so, are you going to believe that from today, that that's why you'll go to heaven? I guess I do, yeah. That's good, man. And that's like a weight off your shoulders, man. You're like, I'm forgiven. It Every is. bad thing I've done, all forgiven. And so then, out of a hundred, how sure are you right now that you'll go to heaven when you die? I mean, after you tell me this, 100%. Exactly. You can be 100%. That's the good news. So then, does doing good things have any part in getting you into heaven? I know that in the Quran, at least it says there are seven heavens. Okay. If I'm not correct. I think that, that you're That's talking about the sky, the different levels of the sky. I don't yes, think it's talking um, about specifically seven different places you can end up after you die. It's just talking about different, like the atmosphere has different levels in it, and that's different. The word heaven can refer to those different um, levels. But yeah, so what we but what do you, what is the answer do you think? Do you think doing good things plays any part in getting you into heaven? I think it does, doesn't it? Because then um because are we going to heaven based on what we do for God or what he's done for us? Based on what we're doing for him. Okay. But if you did five crimes today, tomorrow you did ten good things, would the police ignore your crimes? No, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. So neither will God. Your good deeds uh, don't fix any of the bad deeds you've done. So we don't go to heaven because of what we do for God. We go to heaven because of what instead? That's crazy. Based on what he's done for us, isn't it? Yes. And what has he done to save you from the hell that you should rightfully get? Bring us 
Lord mighty Jesus Christ. Yes, who died on the cross for your sins. You got it. Um, exactly. And it's a gift. Heaven's actually a gift, not a reward. If I was to give yes. you a gift but said that you had to wash my car to get it, is that really a gift? Or is it your payment? for? No. No, it's a payment, right? It's basically a payment. Yes, yeah, so in the same way, heaven's a gift, not a payment. So therefore, you don't have to do any good deeds to get it. You just accept yes. the gift by trusting that God's given it to you through what Jesus did on the cross for you. Make sense? Crazy. Yes. So then, actually... let's say you had a friend who said to you, I believe in Jesus, but I think I'm going to heaven because I'm a good person. Would that friend go to heaven or hell? Heaven. Now, was he trusting in Jesus to go to heaven or was he trusting himself to go to heaven? I mean, it doesn't matter if he was trusting himself, right? Because Well, it does because what it means to believe in Jesus is to trust that I'm going to heaven because of what he did for me on the cross. But this guy thought, I'm going to heaven because I'm a good person. So yeah. he's not trusting in Jesus, so he doesn't have Jesus dying for him. He pays for his own sin, doesn't he? So he wouldn't go to heaven? Correct, he goes to hell. Anyone who trusts in what they do to go to heaven, end up in hell. Those who trust in what Jesus did to get them to heaven, they're the ones who go to heaven. Okay. Making sense? Yes, it is. But let's say you then had another friend who says, I think I'm going to heaven because of two reasons. First reason, because of Jesus dying for me. Second reason is because I pray every day. Would he go to heaven or hell? Heaven. Now, is he trusting only in Jesus to get him into heaven? He's also trusting God. Well, no, no, well, he's trusting, he's trusting himself. He's trusting 50% in what Jesus did to save him. He's trusting 50% in the fact that he prays, his, his own actions. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, therefore, is he 100% trusting in what God did to save him? No, he's, no not. he's not. So, he's going to hell. He goes to hell. You got it. Makes sense? Yes, it does, actually. <laughs> now, think back at the beginning of this conversation. What did you think was going to get you to heaven? My good sins. Yeah, your good actions. And so if you had died, yeah. where would you have ended up? Heaven. If you had died thinking that it was your actions, where would you have Oh, ended? sorry. I would have ended up in hell. Yes. <laughs> it would have been hell, right? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Right, yeah. But sorry. now, if you died this very moment, where would you go? Heaven, because I know Jesus died on the cross fully for me to go to heaven. Yes, you got it, dude. That's so awesome, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It really is. And as a result, this is a weight off your shoulders. You're like, I know I'm forgiven. I know I'm going to heaven. It makes you so much more joyful. But it also doesn't mean you just go and do horrible stuff now. It actually motivates you to live better. Because you're like, I don't want to now turn around and do bad things towards someone who's just been so kind to give up his life to save me. And so that's what motivates you to try and avoid sinful things. Right? It makes you not want to have sex before marriage or lie or steal or lust and so on. Because, yeah, that offends God. And you'll slowly improve. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not going to be perfect this side of heaven, but you will slowly get better and better as time goes on. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. And so then, let's say you're chatting to your friends or family, and you ask them why they think they'll go to heaven. What do you think their answer would be? Heaven. If you ask them why, though, why would they go to heaven, what would they say? I can't really tell you. Yeah. Do you think it might be because of their own actions? Maybe. Probably. Likely, right? And yeah. so therefore, if they died today, where are they currently going? Hell. So what could you do to help them not go there? Explain them that Jesus is the one who died for us to go to heaven. You got it. Exactly right. And this is what makes... Christianity stand out from Islam and Buddhism and Hinduism, all those other religions. All those other religions have no savior. No one is going to die for your sins. But in Christianity, mm. you do. You got Jesus, who's willing to pay the price for your sins. And that's why Jesus can say he's the only way to get to heaven. 
Making sense? Yes. Yeah. Now, do you have a Bible at home? I think I do. Okay. I think I do. Oh, nice, man. And it's been a while since you've read it? I've, I've had, yeah, because I used to go church a lot. Yep. And I stopped going. And then I started it, like, because I moved here to Spain. And then now, like, most of my friends are Muslims. So, you know, it's like, right. we're kind of, you know. But, yeah, my brothers, for example, they still, like, fully Christian, you know. They still Bible and stuff. Yeah, I got Bible, I got Quran. Mixed books here. Yeah, yeah, wow. We believe in God. Yeah, the most yeah. important. Yeah, and so, um, so basically, the what kind of got you over to Islam was just your friends you're hanging out with. They were just chatting to you about it a bit. The information I've been getting, you know, I've got. It just it seemed, you know, pure to me. I like, I really enjoyed it. Right, and Islam does provide people with rules and that kind of structure and how to live, and that and people can see that as a benefit. But what it doesn't have is a solution for the fact that we've broken the rules. Because they don't have a savior. No one is going to pay for our sins. They're hoping that good deeds will fix bad deeds, but that's not how justice is. That's not how justice works. Mm -hmm. And so, Christianity, Christianity provides structure as well and, and rules, but provides you with a solution for the fact that we've broken those rules. Makes sense. Yes. Yeah. And so, do you see how if you are trusting now in Jesus to pay for your sin, you're no longer a Muslim. You're actually a Christian. But Jesus does appear in the Quran too. That's true. But unfortunately, the Quran... Because, you know, the central claims of Jesus, if you read through the Bible, Jesus made three central claims about himself. One is that he's Lord. Two, that he died on the cross. And three, that he rose from the dead. If you read through the Quran... They're the three, three, three things that the Quran explicitly denies about Jesus. They say Jesus is not Lord, he didn't die on the cross, and he didn't rise from the dead. So they're not actually even really believing in the true Jesus who lived 2,000 years ago. Because the Jesus who lived 2,000 years ago did die on the cross. No historian would ever deny that fact. He did rise, and he did claim to be Lord. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. And, you know, like Islam kind of has some sort of arbitrary rules. Like they say it's haram to even listen to music. So you can't even listen to music. Um, you can't yeah, do certain things. You can't take a loan out. You can't um, yeah, drink any alcohol. You can't eat certain foods. All these sort of extra rules, which, yeah, seem a little bit arbitrary. Um, arbitrary rules but the things that God obviously would be concerned about is our behavior towards one another don't lie don't steal don't murder and these are the rules that the Bible clearly lay out yeah what are your thoughts tell me what's, what you're thinking at the moment I don't know I just like listening you know it's okay. just good yeah, if, fair you know, it's, <laughs> I like it because this is things you know you're telling me now then tomorrow I'm going to meet my friends and I'm just gonna let I'm gonna let it out. We're gonna have a full on discussion, you know, so we can, you know, get things in, you know, and comment good. and stuff. It's interesting. Good, good, good. I'm not gonna lie. I really enjoyed this conversation, but it's four o'clock in the morning here. Wow. And I might need to sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What I encourage you to do is, because if you go back to your Muslim friends tomorrow, they'll tell you, oh no, you know, God will just forgive you. Just the good deeds or fix your bad deeds, just pray five times a day, the Quran says this, Quran says that. The thing is this though, is that you already know now from a logical point of view, not a religious, from a logical point of view, good deeds do not fix bad deeds. Yeah. And so, and that's a fundamental flaw in Islam that's insurpassable. I, I talk to Muslims about that and they just say, oh no, Allah, Allah just forgive, he just forgives. That's a bad judge. And so they won't have an answer to that. Um, I will I, I will ask them tomorrow. Yeah. Let's see what they say. But 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 it's really, really important though to not to say, Oh, but I'm with my friends, I'll believe whatever they're believing. Because you won't have your friends with you on judgment day. You're gonna stand yeah. before God alone with, with all your sins if you do not trust that Jesus took the punishment for you. Right? 
And Jesus is more than just a good prophet. Yes, he's a prophet, but he's even more than that. He claimed to be God. He claimed to be the one who made the universe. And if God is all-powerful, don't you think God can take on a physical body if he wants to, to save his own creation? Be good. Yeah, it's like a king. Let's say there was a king of the world. He was sitting on his throne with all his royal robes, but he saw his own son drowning in the mud. Don't you think he would say, look, it doesn't matter if I've got my royal robes, I'm diving into that mud to rescue my child, right? Of course. And so God, because he has so much love for his own creation, decide, decided to dive into his own creation to save us by he himself bearing our punishment. Crazy. Yeah, so <laughs> this is some amazing news, eh? Really is. Okay, yeah. bro, I really appreciate it. No worries. I'll, I'll share with you. I've got a TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube you could check out. The username is Perfect. Nimgod. I'll take a picture yeah. of that too. Yeah, and feel free to reach out to me if you have any more questions, man. love to help you out. My name is Ryan. I 100% will. Oh, good. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Yeah, what, really was what was your name? What was your name? Lucas. Lucas, nice meeting you, Lucas. God bless you, man. Nice meeting you too. See you. See you too.